Next up, we have Maria Benson, Director at EY. Maria is EY's UK lead for electric vehicles, focused on advising clients engaged in the energy transition, including renewable energy, energy storage and electric vehicles. Once again, if you've got questions for Maria, please post them in the Q&A tab and we'll try and get through as many as we can in the time. So Maria, you've had a varied career. Tell us a bit about how you got to where you are today. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, um, I actually started out in uh, automotive, so I think it's similar to yourself there. <laughs> uh, a long time ago now. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think as you've said, and as uh, several other panelists have said, it, that's a very male dominated business. And to be honest, at the time, I didn't quite reflect on how male dominated it was. So a lot of times you just find yourself kind of going with the flow and trying to reach into people and, and kind of follow the conversations that when I look back were very sort of male oriented, but you just kind of go with it. Um, from there, I moved into uh, m &A, which uh, equally was very male dominated. Um, so I worked, I worked in that for a while as well. And I think, you know, for me, there wasn't much of a, of a progression there in terms of how I felt about women roles and, and especially around senior women. Um, I moved over to EY about seven years ago now, and I, I think, you know, it's probably a sign of the times, but also EY being a very, um, actually really good at focusing on, on diversity. So what's really become evident to me in these last seven years is that there's so much we can do, and if we actively focus on it, um, you know, we can, we can make a lot of progress around uh, you know, diversity and equality. And actually looking back at those, those other companies I worked for, there was no real reason why it was that way. It was that just no one really gave it, you know, the, the attention um, that, that it required. And so as a, sorry, as I was just gonna say, as, as at EY, I feel like, you know, there's so much more support for, for female leadership. That's great. That's really good. And presumably, this should be more than a just a kind of box ticking exercise, having just one woman on the team. You know, what's what's your view in terms of the kind of notion of having female representation in teams? Yeah, no, I think I think that's a really good point. I mean, for me, I think we are still in a position. I think we've got over the point. I think someone else has mentioned it previously that we've got over that point where we're questioning whether diversity is a good thing. We all know that there's a lot of research out there. You can put, uh, you know, point to a lot of data points actually where you know, diverse teams just perform better. So I think everyone agrees on that. But then the next question is, how do we get there? And I think there is still a notion that you know, on every team, there should be a female representative. And it's, it's better than not having any females at all. But for me, you know, the, the, the sort of the sign of success would be when we don't actually need to worry about that anymore and that the team is naturally diverse. Um, but for now, I think, you know, it's, it's a good start, but the quicker we can get into a situation where we don't treat females or any other minority as a sort of representative, but just they're naturally on teams because. Um, they have a, a seat at the table and, and they sort of uh, um, deserve to be there. Yeah. And you're advising clients currently going through the energy transition. I know a lot of the other panelists have said that, you know, it's really important because we need uh, the reflection of our end customer, you know, should be exactly the same. We have uh, diversity across all of these subgroups. How does that play out in what you do with when you're speaking with customers? No, I think it's really important, especially uh, for me, uh, being a consultant, it's, it's really difficult to work as an advisor for, for um, clients or companies um, if they feel that we don't quite represent um, how their, you know, what they te their team looks like mm -hmm. and what they might be coming from. So as we discussed, uh, with some of the other panelists discussed earlier around, you know, who's actually buying electric vehicles, who's, who's the market, so to speak, um, you know, that, that reflection of that on our teams as well is, is so important. Thank you. So let's take a quick look at the Q&A. We've got some questions here. Um, 
How has your interview process adapted to encourage diversity? Um, my interview process, has that been? Uh, Yeah, that was the question. Um, so if, if that, that recruitment, that, how the recruitment process may be yeah, overall. No, absolutely, absolutely. No, it's a good, it's a good question. So I think um, we've definitely, as a, as a company, started looking at, um, or we have for a while, looked at different points of view because we're all individuals, but there are certain behaviors that are perhaps more prevalent in women than in men. And I think it was mentioned by an earlier panelist, for example, you know, women perhaps are uh, less willing to, to sort of promote themselves or putting themselves up for a role that maybe they think is a stretch. Or, uh, you know, I think one of the questions earlier was around, you know, if women are very good at organizing things, maybe we get stuck in that role. Mm. So all of that stuff we need to be aware of. And so when I, um, so coming to the interview question, when I do interview people, I try to get behind all of that mm. and, and really see the individual. Yeah, that's great. And actually we have another question that sort of leads on from that. And it's all down to kind of being assertive. So how did you build your assertion skills? And um, would you say assertion looks different in men and women? I definitely think so. I mean, I remember uh, it's luckily, I think that's going away. But I mean, there was a time when an assertive woman was was kind of frowned upon, whereas an assertive man was looked at as a big leader, right? Which is horrible. It's really, really horrible. I think we've we've luckily we've we've we're bigger than that now. We we know that's not the case anymore. Uh, and for me, I think I think uh, Kelly mentioned that actually with their upbringing. You know, having parents who believe in believe in you, having you know the social network that believes in you. That that that's really important, and that, that's been really important for me as well. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. Um. Okay, so we've got some more here. Um, this is an interesting one, being in the position that you're in. What do you think is the biggest challenge for women in leadership positions? I think there's a few things. So one of them um, is this, this thing around, you know, when there are not a lot of females around, how do you, how do you create that social network and the, um, and the sort of support network that you need at that level? Because any leadership role, um, you know, there are times when you probably feel a bit alone and you feel like the decision is all up to you. And so most of us do need that support network. And you know, the more of you there are, the, the more of a community you can you can create. But if if you're the only female, I think that's a very exposed position to be in. Yeah. And, and actually we have another question that, that does lead on to that. Um, do you think you've run a team differently to how you've been managed by a man? And does this affect team morale and output? Yeah, I mean, I think there are certain things that I probably do look at differently than a man would. And it's around the sort of the, the well-being of the team, the, the point that, you know, it's not always the one who speaks the loudest or speaks the most that necessarily has the best ideas. So that you know collaborative approach, I think, is, is definitely something I try to follow. Thank you. Thanks very much, Maria. We'll see you again for the discussion a little bit later with the rest of the panel. Thank you, Michelle.